not the perfect solution to the problem. So we're going to talk about a better solution. Um, I almost thought of something else I wouldn't say about longitudinal studies. Ah, I know. Longitudinal studies, most of what's out there tend to be not everything that's out there. There, there are some that are explicitly de designed for gerontology, but a lot of them really aren't. And another, another weakness of a lot of longitudinal studies is that um, many of them were actually designed to do something else. And then people realized years later that you've got this data sitting around. It's been sitting around for a few decades, and so those people are old now, so let's go look them up. So actually some of the more interesting research along these lines is there, there, are, there are old child studies that have turned into aging longitudinal studies, often with huge gaps somewhere in the middle because people didn't do it. And those can be kind of cool, but they all have you know, original sample kinds of, kinds of issues. Or you can get things that are just done for some other reason altogether. And also you have to think about how the original sample is comprised because people do interesting things like the Baltimore Longitudinal Study that we heard a little bit about, at least at second hand already. What they did was, because they were, it was a, partly an NIH-initiated uh, study, they went out and rounded up other people in the Bethesda, Baltimore area who worked for the government. And so the original sample is, was largely um, Department of Agriculture scientists. And you know, people do these things like deciding to study aging by studying male samples. What about like maturation or history effects for longitudinal studies? In the sense of that like, like pra practice and stuff? And that they may be changing due to a historical event that happens or yeah. just maturing, it's not necessarily age differences? Yeah, that would be examples like time effects being yeah. confounded with, with age effects. Oh yeah, sure, always a problem. Good point. Um, actually, let's take the break now and come back and talk, talk about some things. We're coming back at about uh, 3.35. Is that 10 minutes? About 10 minutes.
Today with the, the speaker, I found it, the point that he brought up that, you know, it's pretty much pointless to just throw insurance at somebody if, you know, you're just going to be treating a condition that they hopefully could have prevented before. But the big problem with physical activity and using that as prevention is that people don't. No. We're going to treat them 101. Other than telling them they're going to die on a horrible death full of disease.